for a long time, it was not really possible to build DeFi on Bitcoin because the Bitcoin scripting language is very limited. So how does it look right now is that um, there's been an effort by builders that are in love with Bitcoin and also want to build applications of Bitcoin to create the infrastructure that we're slowly seeing coming online. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bitcoin Builders Breakdown, where we are talking about everything that's happening in the Bitcoin economy and those that are developing in it and around Bitcoin itself. We're also educating all of you on some of the new components when it comes to building on Bitcoin, whether that be Bitcoin layers or topics like today talking about decentralized finance. I'm your host, Kyle Licott, and today I'm joined by Jacob from Hermetica. Jacob, how you doing? A short intro on yourself and Hermetica, please. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Hi, hi everybody. Kyle, thanks for having me. I'm Jacob. I'm the CEO and founder of Hermetica. Um, I've been in the Bitcoin space for six, seven years now, and yeah, just been really focused on building Bitcoin DeFi, which I'm excited to talk more about for the last past two years. Absolutely. So taken us two years and then some back. Uh, decentralized finance has been a term many have heard in and out of the industry of Web3. But what is DeFi or decentralized finance? Yeah, great question. I think there is no like set definition of it, but I, I'll, I'll try to define it for us or how I see it. I see if I, decentralized finance essentially as financial services that adhere to the same principles as Bitcoin. So principles like non-custodial, permissionless, they are transparent. And a lot of them, DeFi protocols, a lot of them have a decentralized governance structure. So let's double click on each of those. Uh, Non-custodial means you are not giving up custody over your assets. You control, you, you can retain control and access to your assets at all times while you interact with these financial services. Um, permissionless means that you are not, there's nobody that can tell you that you're not allowed to use the assets. Transparent means that you can verify everything on chain. So the data is fully open and transparent. Um, and lastly, decentralized governments, governance means that a lot of these protocols are governed by, in many cases, token holders. So the governance structure is different than what we're used to with normal corporations. And, and that said, how, how does this relate to Bitcoin? So now that we've got yeah. that base, how does it relate to Bitcoin? I think his, if you look historically, DeFi has been built outside of Bitcoin mainly. That is because Bitcoin just has a very limited scripting language. So a lot of smart contract applications are not possible on the base chain. But we're seeing a renaissance of Bitcoin building, and that's what we're here to talk about today too. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of L2 platforms like Stacks, like Bootstock, like many others now, uh, really a proliferation to come online to allow us to build Bitcoin DeFi on Bitcoin uh, or build B DeFi on Bitcoin. And what that means is build applications that ultimately settle into Bitcoin. So it's happening. So let's talk about that renaissance for a moment. You, you've you been in this industry for about two years and then some. I'll give you a little bit more uh, that you've been into this building. And, and you said there is a renaissance happening right now when it comes to building on Bitcoin. What is that? What does that look like for, for you, but more broadly for the industry as things start to maybe expand or shift uh, with those starting to build on Bitcoin? Yeah, so... For a long time, as I said, it was not really possible to build DeFi on Bitcoin because the Bitcoin scripting language is very limited. So how does it look right now is that for the past, you know, Stacks has been around for what is like six, six years now or more. And there's been an effort by builders that are in love with Bitcoin and also want to build applications of Bitcoin to create the infrastructure that we're slowly seeing coming online. I think it's picking up tremendously. Um, in the last couple of years. And so we're coming to this threshold where we're really able to actually express full, def or build full DeFi applications on a stack that is um, settling into Bitcoin. 
and how that looks right now is, yeah, as I said, there's a number of different protocols that are coming online or already online. Rootstock is one of them. Stacks is another one. There's talk about Bit, BitVM and, and others that soon will will join the race. And a lot of the applications that we see on other protocols like Solana, like Ethereum being the big one, are becoming available to be built on, on Bitcoin. And we're seeing a lot of teams, including us at Hermetica, to pursue um, those applications. And Jacob, when we, we look at DeFi, decentralized finance, and at Bitcoin's creation as well, we, we see the removal of intermediaries. How does this benefit more on the DeFi side, individuals and economies uh, where challenges might arise either in new financial infrastructures or maybe transitioning uh, financial infrastructures as well? Yeah, I, I mean, so to give you a little bit of a backstory on on why I got motivated to build on Bitcoin, that it is really about this this question. I spent the early my early twenties building a company, an eyeglasses company in the developing world, mainly in Africa, and uh, it was super successful because there's no eyeglasses company in the developing world, especially in Africa. And so, after like two years in, we had like 25, 30 employees, and me growing up in Europe, I was used to paying people with wires. And so one time I was like thinking about how we can streamline our payroll. And I went to my team and I said, Hey guys, how about we pay you all in wires? And, um, and they looked like to me at me, like I was speaking Chinese and because it turns out not one single person on my team had a bank account. And that was really the first time where I realized, okay, there's a whole part of the world that is not actually connected to the financial system. Uh, and then learning about Bitcoin later allowed me to connect the dots and say, okay, this is actually a technology where we can bring these bring these kind of financial services to developing countries. And um, yeah, that's basically the the bridge for me. How it plays out, I think that DeFi is really leveling the playing field, if you want. It removes intermediaries, but it also allows to bring essentially services that are not available to most people in the world to anybody at the same time. So what we saw in developing countries with, for example, telecommunications uh, infrastructure, where African countries went from not having any telecommunications infrastructure to leapfrogging over landlines and going directly to mobile, I see that same playing out for financial services. And, and the leapfrog will be from basically unbanked to DeFi, which allows anybody across the world to access the same financial infrastructure and the same financial services and therefore really yeah levels the playing field so a person in in Africa can have the same level of access than somebody in New York or Paris or London and the removal of intermediaries has a number of benefits we, we touched on it in the, in the first question I think the main ones are that usually how let's ask it, ask it this way how do intermediaries actually um, are not beneficial to the users. One, I think, is custody. They take control of, of people's funds, and therefore, there's a lot of power in that. And the other uh, the other element is regulation and, and permission to access. So they make it so some people are allowed to use the platform and other people's are not. And that allows them to, in many ways, extract rent from the users. So as we transition into a DeFi world where there's a non-custodial solution, there's a permissionless uh, solution, the ex extraction of rent is significantly more difficult or, and will just go down as we're seeing uh, across the board in DeFi. And therefore, that allows for more economic activity and more economic opportunity for the people that want to participate. And that is generally speaking just better for anybody in the world. It will lead to a GDP increase. It will lead to, um, yeah, just more prosperity, essentially, for for everybody that wants to engage. Well, and that said, how do Bitcoin DeFi protocols like Hermetica and others play into the shifting uh, narrative as well? We start to look at DeFi, not just as DeFi of the world's past, but now more about, uh, say, Bitcoin DeFi and otherwise. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that how I see what we're building is really the lens of we will allow the leapfrog to happen in that 
what we're building at Hermetica, for example, is we're taking trading infra uh, trading strategies, investment products that are usually reserved for ultra high net worth individuals, institutions. We're talking people with 10 million plus in net worth, and we're bringing them on chain, which then allows us to make them available to, to anybody with a wallet, right? Anybody with an address. And so we're really leveling the playing field that way. And we'll not just bring these technology, uh, these, these strategies and products to the developed world, we'll bring them to everybody at the same time. So people will go from not having access to a bank account to having access to Bitcoin DeFi, which allows them to access what is now reserved for ultra high net worth individuals. So it's like a, a, a double leapfrog if you want. So, so speaking of leapfrogging, leapfrog us into onboarding into Hermetica. What does that process look like as you and the team begin to onboard more users into the Bitcoin economy? Yeah, so at the moment, we have one trading strategy that is live on testnet. So folks can go check it out at beta.hermetica.fi. We're still on testnet. We're, we're waiting for the infrastructure to come online. We're not fully there yet. It's coming. It's coming soon. Um, and there will be more and more strategies coming that will allow people to express their view on the market, but also get access to strategies that allows them to passively earn Bitcoin, which is what a lot of people from what we see want to want to experience and as i said do that in a in with strategies that are usually not available to folks because we use exotic options which is something that is traded mainly on otc desks and those options allow us to express strategies that really have the four key elements of what we see needs to be an earned strategy which is attractive api APY, so you can actually earn a, a consistent return. Um, they have a limited downside. What we see in the market is a lot of strategies that have an unlimited downside, which is really challenging. In, the, in some market environments, they just lose a lot, which we don't think is, is um, something that we should even allow to happen per, per definition or per, per, per architecture of the strategy. So that element plus it works in all market environments makes and then obviously it's decentralized it's non-custodial it's secure it's transparent really all those elements together make a strategy that you can just deposit your bitcoin into and then let the protocol do its thing and, and earn your bitcoin so that's coming online very soon in, on mainnet as soon as we have sbtc oh well all right let's dive into that what is sbtc and how or will that maybe play a role in hermetica uh, version 2.0 going forward. Yeah. So SBTC is really, we see it as the missing piece to build the Bitcoin DeFi. Um, there's, we've written a manifesto on our medium where we talk about different elements that are needed for us to build a Bitcoin based financial system. One is the settlement layer that obviously is Bitcoin. We need to represent money. We need to represent fungible and non fungible assets. That's coming online right now with ordinals, BRC20 and other protocols. Then we need the ability to execute smart contracts uh, trustlessly. And, and we also need a way to bring Bitcoin into those smart contracts. And that's where, mm -hmm. that where SBTC comes in. Now, I'll double click on that in a second. The other two elements that we need, and that's why we think we, we need layer twos like Stacks, is because we need a user experience that is akin to what we have in, in today's financial system, which is very fast, and very cheap, ideally faster and cheaper than what we have now. And so only if we have very, very fast block times and we have fees that are tenable, not like what we're seeing right now on the, on the, on the main chain, can we really express Bitcoin DeFi in, in a way that can get mass adoption and therefore really establish itself. But so SBTC is that, that fourth element where if we have a layer that has smart contracts, but we are not able to bring Bitcoin into those smart contracts in a trustless way, it's not that useful, right? <laughs> and so SBTC does that. Um, the design is a trust minimized way to essentially bridge Bitcoin using, I don't, I'm not going to go into the details of this, there's a lot of technical details to it, but there's the stacks, stackers that sign transactions 
um, and and also pledge their collateral, their stacks that they're staking towards the bridging of Bitcoin into smart contracts. And that allows us to trust, trust in a trust minimized way, but also a free way, there's not going to be any fees, to bring Bitcoin from main chain into a stack smart contract where we then can do all our magic on it. Awesome. Well, Jacob, speaking of your magic, where can those listening go to learn, to sign up and engage with Hermetica and yourself online? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks for giving us the opportunity to uh, to promote the product. We are at hermetica.fi, F-I on X, formerly Twitter. I'm Jacob underscore BTC if you want to chat with me on, on X. And yeah, those are the best places to find us. Hermetica.fi has a newsletter and a waiting list. So if you go to the to the website, you can sign up there. We send up weekly weekly updates so you can stay up to date. Perfect. Jacob, thank you very much. And thank you to the entire Hermetica team for making the time here on Bitcoin Builders Breakdown. Hope everyone got a little bit more educated on Bitcoin DeFi and the next stage and unlock around the Bitcoin economy. And for those that want to build on Bitcoin, I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.